Well, welcome to the last lesson this year. In this lesson, we're going to design a project to collect data, and you're going to have to use all of the information that you have learned about bias and questioning and all that kind of stuff to be able to present this data for somebody to look at. So let's start with just a very simple stuff. How many of you have ever been asked to fill out a survey? Well, I don't know about you, but I've been going down the mall, and I've had people approach me with a clipboard. I've been at home and had a phone call. I've had surveys given to me on the internet. I've had them emailed to me. I've seen them in magazines and stuff like that. So they're actually quite common, and they actually serve a really good purpose. They gather information about something that somebody wants to know. And the only way they can do it is by going to the people who are participating in that area. So what was the survey on? Well, surveys can be about music, food, healthcare, politics, a uh, whole bunch of very controversial subjects, stuff like that. And why did they want your opinion? Well, they wanted your opinion because they want to gather information. Now, that information not necessarily is about you, but it's information that they want so they can make whatever they're doing better. So let's talk about the project you're going to create. In this lesson, you will be creating your own survey to answer a question. There are five general steps to creating a survey question that we're going to talk about, and some of them are the construction of the actual survey, and the others are steps to make sure you consider all the possible mistakes that could happen. Now, the types of surveys that we could do will be limited because we're going to be doing it on the junior high in the school. So having an email survey is not very practical because you can't get the email addresses of everybody in the school. Secondly, because of the nature of the classes, it's quite simple to do a census. So let's take a look at some of the things that we have to consider. The first thing you need to do is to prepare your question. Or rather, maybe the first thing you need to do is to come up with the topic you want to gather questions about. Now, when you're preparing your questions, you cannot do trivial things like, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite pizza? What's your favorite soft drink? What's your favorite soccer team? What's your favorite brand of motorcycle? What's your favorite brand of snowmobile? You have to come up with something which is at the level of grade nine. So start thinking about your social studies classes, things that you've actually talked about, discussed. Here's an opportunity for you to actually figure out something and get information about it. Now consider your audience. You're going to be doing junior high, grade seven, eight, and nine. Some of them may not have had information about some of the things that you have learned. So consider that. So here's some things you have to consider. The first one is bias, and we have a whole chart of that stuff in the previous lesson where you can look at. The second one is wording. Make sure that your wording is applicable to all three grades. Don't use terminology that the grade seven would not have encountered yet. As for sample size, we know we can do a census, so we don't have to worry about sampling. The timing of the survey, take a look at the context of what you want to ask. And of course, make sure that you don't do something which is going to cause people to be a little bit uncomfortable. So do not create a question which is going to invade someone's personal life. So consider your confidentiality. Step two, we need to identify the population and possibly choose a sample. Now this was designed for any type of a survey creation, so you may have to use a sample in other areas at other times. But for this example, today, we're only going to worry about the census from grade 7 to 9, so you don't have to choose a sample. Now, make sure that when you're doing all this stuff that you understand sample costs, time, and all that stuff, because that's going to be on your test. So even though you don't have to do it, make sure you understand it. Step three, collect your data. Now, you're going to have a question, and we're going to talk about how to create the question in a moment. And I'm going to be taking it around to the classes and making sure that everybody gets a chance to fill it out. Make sure you understand the timing of applying your question when you do the collection of your data. Make sure you don't do something which creates a bias of timing. Step four, you're going to be getting the data in a raw form for you to analyze and display. So you need to choose an appropriate display for the data. Now you're going to include a table, which is beyond your graph, and you're going to have to create the appropriate circle graph or type of graph you're going to use. Now in the situation that we're using, it should be pretty simple to understand we're not going to be doing a line graph because we don't have a time trend here. 
So you'll be doing a bar graph or point graph or something of that nature, more likely. A well, circle graph is also possible. So once you've decided what kind of display you're going to do, step five is you have to examine each step of the project to make sure it is above average in all respects. This is your final project of the year, and I will not accept junk. You have to give me your best effort. Look at each part of your project and see what you consider to be the level you wish to be assessed at, and design a rubric to ev evaluate your project. Now, you don't have to design the rubric because I've given you the rubric on the next page. Now, okay, this is how I'm going to assess your question. Was your question prepared with consideration of the possible problems of bias? Now, here are the four levels that I'm going to be taking a look at. If it looks like you haven't even thought about it, it will not be adequate. The bias in the question can be a problem that would be adequate. However, when you're looking at doing your question, I'm looking for the last two. The first part is your bias is limited or, and preferably, there is no bias in the question at all. The next thing is, is your wording clear? If your wording has multiple meanings, then I can't accept it. Do I think that the wording is clear, may, but may cause some people to be confused? Understand that one of the key things about a question in a survey is that everybody has to understand it the same way. So adequate is not where you want to be targeting. Now, the next two are great. The wording is clear. Everybody understands it the same way. And better than that, you check with other students, and the wording is clear and understood by all the same students. If you do something like this, then you're going to get the excellent, no problem. The method used to collect the information was. Now, the method used has been done for you. So these four categories, really, you don't have any control over. If this was a situation where we had more time and you could choose a sampling method, that's where this rubric would come in into play. But I'm going to be having you do a census from 7 to 9, so this is not going to be one of your concerns. The display of the data. Right? If you just slap it down on paper, I'm not going to accept it. Adequate would be you just graph the data and you really didn't take into consideration what kind of graphing you did. Proficient is choosing the proper type of graph. To be excellent, the type of graph was chosen to display the graph clearly to all viewers. In this situation, we're looking at where it's placed, how large it is, as well as including all the different parts, labels, titles, and your table of data, as well as the conclusion on the bottom of the page. Okay. At this point, I want to stop a second and I want to show you how I want you to present your data. So this is what I'd like you to take a look at doing. The first thing you need to do is you have to give me your question and that's going to be your title. Then you're going to have to graph it and on the right hand side over here I want a table of data of all the information that you've collected and then I want your general conclusion to be down here. Now remember to take care when you're doing your spacing. Don't make a mistake and have something that's going to cut into it. Right, space everything properly, and this is going to take some for planning. All right. Now, going on then, now that you know how I want it displayed, once you have your question done, you hand your final question into your teacher, and I'm going to distribute it to the rest of the students, and they're going to do it, and then I'm going to give you your data back. Now, once you have your data collected, it's time to create a display to present your data to the rest of the class. I need you to select the proper type of graph which includes your question and the responses you have received in graphical form. We'll give you a large piece of manila tag paper, which you will draw all of this stuff on. You must use a straight edge. You must follow all the rules for creating a graph. If you're not sure, go back and take a look at them. Select the appropriate type of graph, appropriate size to the paper given, proper axis, proper sectors if you're doing a circle graph, Spacing for bars on bar graphs, titles, labels, accuracy, and including your table of data. And once that's all done, you can add color to increase its appeal to the audience. And then finally, at the very end, at the very bottom, you're going to have a conclusion. OK, step three. Let's talk a little bit more about your conclusion. So you've got your project with a topic you wish to gather information about. You created the question to collect data about your topic. Now it's time to make a conclusion about your research and your presentation.
Place this in clear writing at the bottom of your paper under your graphic representation. Pay attention to all the details on the rubric as you conduct your research and present your conclusions. Now, what is a conclusion? What did you determine when you finished everything up? For example, let's say you were doing something on global warming. When you're done all of your gra graphing and you're done all of your collection, you should have some sort of a conclusion or some sort of a final statement as to what you discovered about people's opinion on global warming. That is what your conclusion is going to be. Make sure you do it in proper sentences, spelling, and all that stuff is definitely going to be included. Step four. Once this is all done, get another classmate to review your work. Offer advice on what can be improved. Now, I advise you to get more than one person to look at it and keep a list of what they say. So I want you to create a paragraph which is going to be handed in with your project on what you did correctly and what you should have done differently. Make sure to place your name on this document when you hand it in because there's going to be a lot of them which are similar. Finally, hand in your project so we'll see you in class.